Good morning, everyone. This is KC from This Epic Life. I thought it would be helpful to talk to you a little bit about meditation today because every once in a while I get this incredible wave of requests for information about my meditation practice, about how I find time to do it between my three kids and very full-time job and second full-time job as a professional musician and blogger and all these other things. And you know, the question is always, how do you find time to do it? You know, I'm, I'm up to a place where uh, ideally I'm meditating 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night to kind of bookend my day. Uh, the reality is there's a lot of days where I travel that it's more like 15 minutes or 25 minutes, uh, maybe only in the morning because I'm traveling at night. But the reality is, is that we have to make time to do this. And I want to give you a few um, things to think about in terms of making time to meditate and the benefits of it. And I'll probably break this out over a couple separate little videos for you. But, you know, the, the, other, the other part of the equation is, you know, our American culture <laughs> is always looking for ways to hack things. How do we make this as small of a commitment as possible, as easy and turnkey, as, you know, succinct as possible? And um, Mahatma Gandhi was quoted as saying, I have so much to do today that I need to make more time to meditate, you know, so think about that, think about it, um, that it's the most important time you could possibly spend with yourself, because when you do that on a consistent basis, you cultivate more power, more leverage to become a force multiplier in all your action that you take out into the world. So 15 minutes of meditation, day by day by day week by week, month by month, year by year, has a compounding force multiplier effect in the sheer volume of ways you can affect the world around you. So I ask you to think about that. I'm holding this sweet crystal. It's uh, orange calcite. My aunt gave it to me and uh, makes me happy. It's the happiness crystal. So let's check out something. This is about as high up in the trust tree as I could possibly get because this is my most personal sacred space in my whole life. And I usually don't even bring technology into this space. The only reason I have my phone in here is because it's an airplane mode. So here's my meditation room. It's all white. It's this little nook in my attic. And up here on the wall is my reminder to do the work. <laughs> so that's the only thing up above me on the wall. And it just reminds me that no matter how chaotic my life is on any given day, that if I pop in here and I look up at that, I remember that it says do, period, spend the time. The, underline all caps, the most important work, period. And of course the period just remain, just kind of emphasizes and reminds me that it's that important. Here on my altar are my guys. These are my Kriya Yogi Gurus. Um, I could go into detail about all of them later on, but they just remind me of all the other people that have walked the path and gotten uh, achieved enlightenment within their lifetime. And uh, it never hurts to surround yourself with amazingly inspired people when you're trying to do amazingly inspired things. So I ask you to remember that. And the third thing, the most important thing, I, I, I realized this yesterday when I was talking to my friend Karen, who I'm uh, trying to get in onto the meditation path, is that most of us treat meditation the same way we do running, the same way we do basically anything that we know we should be doing <laughs> that's good for ourselves. We treat it as addition, addition to what I'm already doing. And I'm going to ask you to flip that and to treat it as subtraction. What is it subtracting? What is it taking away? Well, it's taking away, meditation is taking away anxiety. It's taking away stress. It's taking away even just a few minutes of time that we usually commit to thinking about things, thinking about chaos, thinking about things that ultimately inhibit where we're going in our lives. Let's look at subtracting those painful minutes and giving back to ourselves some sacred space. Because I honestly believe that everything is only about creating space for ourselves to be who we're here to be, to add the value that we're here to add. 
and to contribute to the world, all the things, the amazing things that we're here to contribute. So think about it honestly in, in terms of subtraction. You know, whenever you frame it as addition, the, the mind immediately jumps into to defense mode and says, but we have all this other shit going on. We can't possibly find time, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 25 minutes, two 30 minute segments of meditation uh, a day. It's impossible. We, can, we don't have, we're at max load limit. Um, clearly you can't meditate and achieve a, uh, a pure connection from that state of mind. So we have to look at it as, look at, at it as subtraction. I'm getting back this sacred five minutes that I'm committing to this. So where do we begin? We begin by saying that if I was going to run a marathon, I wouldn't step out my front door and go run two miles the first day. I'd probably hurt myself and not want to run the rest of the week. I'd be sore the next day. I wouldn't want to run. So I'm going to ask you to start at two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, whatever you can do. And the whole goal here is to just turn your whole consciousness, your whole mind into one giant white screen. So picture yourself sitting in an IMAX theater. You're the only person in the theater. Middle row, middle seat, huge white screen. All your consciousness and your thoughts fill that screen. Start at one side, wipe it to white. When thoughts arise, and they will, don't get into your uh, conversation with yourself about like what an idiot you are for thinking thoughts or that I have a monkey mind. I'm never going to meditate because I cannot turn my brain off. <laughs> you just have to wipe it to white. There's no judgment there. If the janitor was cleaning up the theater, he would just sweep the thing clean. He doesn't say, somebody draw every single, like, you know soda container or whatever, popcorn container, he's not judging everybody who dropped it. Maybe he is. Um, but when we wipe the screen, we don't judge. We just wipe it to white because that's what we do. Because that white is the space we need to do what we're going to do next. So this was just kind of a starting point. Um, there's no outline here. I'm just kind of bringing up some thoughts that have been raised by so many different people this week. And I really appreciate everyone's input and, uh, asking of questions because it starts with the question and I'm hopefully in a place where I could help provide some answers. So much love to you. More later.